My name is Russell Law, you're the third. All my friends and close family members call me the Don. The Don? Right. All right. So Donna I, Harlem. I heard exactly. <laughs> Donna Harlem. All right. Uh, so you're from New York? New York. Yeah, I'm from New York. So I hear you read a certain book? Yeah, I had a uh, certain encounter with one of Mr. Aaron's <laughs> books. Uh, uh, last week, I worked at New York Transit Authority here, Time Warner Building, my office on the mezzanine. I ran into a young lady, I mean, young lady, selling the book. I saw the gentleman in the vehicle. First of all, I thought he was selling kind of like uh, CDs and stuff. Then he told me, I do books. I'm like, okay, right? I'm done, I read books. Then I met his little assistant who accused me of going to jail and stuff. Going, you didn't know I'm about to go up to the jail? I'm like, no. So anyway, she said, we had the book. I said, let me see what he have here. Then I saw, oh, uh, rappers are in danger. So I'm like, okay, my son's 18, he can rap music. I'm going to get this for him. And he, we chilled. It's urban stuff. I read a little of the jacket. I, I grew up with Donald Goins and Iceberg Slim and a lot of good um, inner city urban um, um, books. So, took it home. Seize up. Left your surprise on the table. Saw it. Then I went back and I looked at it, started reading the jacket and the inside and the other books. And I'm like, Damn. And then I saw Ralphie McCardo's name in there. He's a friend of mine who, who promotes this man's business. So I started reading, and I said, you know what? This kid ain't going back to college until the 19th. Let me just read some of it. So I started looking at it, looking at it. Then I said, let me take it to work with me. Took it to work with me. Then I could put it down. And then my friends are like, at work, like, yo, Don, um, you're not eating lunch? I'm like, no, leave me alone. And they, you know, you going on break? I said, no. They're like, yo, man, you have you been sleeping and stuff, man? You've been with that book for a few days now. And I'm like, I was like, I thought they wanted some of my stuff. I was like, hi, Nick. And I... I couldn't sleep. I wasn't eating when I was going home, and I would change because I work at night, ten to six. I go change, see everybody, mm, mm, bah, yeah. and I run to the kitchen and I take the book out. I'm like, just let me read a couple more pages. I'm going to bed. Then I read a couple of. I go upstairs. I lay in bed. I'm awake. I'm thinking about Justin and Portia and Candy and Ringo and this one. Oh, the father. Oh, man, why do you put that in the rap? Why do you say that about the white suit? And I'm like feeling this. And man, this brother is deep. This brother's not a bookseller. This brother's a crack dealer. Because his work is like that. It's so addictive. I'm like, damn, I need a 12-step program now. I'm going to read some junk mail. Calm me down. Get me out of this quagmire. So... I'm like, this is so beautiful because I read this book 500 and something pages. I started Monday and I finished this morning. And I've never read a book like that and that intensity that's feeling the characters. I'm like, this dude Bryce is a serial killer. Don't anybody know that? There ain't nobody use the word serial killer. You know? But um, it was a wonderful experience. So this is just the first book you read of mine. First. Oh my goodness. First book. book. And I'm like, and now I'm an OD. You <laughs> see, I ain't gonna get nothing done. So you read a lot of books. I read African history. I read about Brazil, Spain. This. I read about insects, roaches, rat. I read about anything. Uh -uh. Politics, anything. Inner city, Caribbean, African, anything. Because that's what I tell my son. As long as you read and obtain. The input of information that gives you power. Readers and leaders, in other words. Right. That gives you independence. That's what sets you free. Because they can never steal what's in your mind. So my, my contention has always been that writing rappers are in danger. It's almost like having ten rap albums. What, what do you think about that? I mean, it's, it's like so close to what's happening and could happen and how you got to watch your P's and Q's in that business because the big record companies are just looking at the numbers and they could set you up for the drama to produce the numbers and it could backfire on your whole career but it, yes you could definitely get 10 albums out of that that book should be platinum with all the junk they got on the best selling list this out here so you know? all the books that you read like um, in terms of urban fiction like you said you read a lot of Donald Donald Walt wrote it, read his collection Iceberg Slim, um, 
uh, Pimp, My Story, uh, Silky the Pimp, uh, Black Samurai, what? Okay. Okay? So, that collection. So keeping it real, I mean, you know, you haven't been paid for this interview. I no, really want to no, know no, no. deep down, like, no. what my real, what, what did my book leave you with? What did, what did, I mean, it's only one book you read, okay. Rappers on Dangerous. Besides but, wanting more and thinking that this man had 30 books and whatnot, what it left me with is I want to see this on a big screen. I want to see him telling our stories of the inner city, which is for real, on the screen. I want to see our people. I want to see Latinos. I want to see the black. I want to bring the Arabs and the Indians. I bring all the body in who you don't see on the every weekend film features in the major theaters. This is major. So let's just get it on. And everybody, you know, now nah, I ain't getting paid. I seen his brother running around town. I've been chased. I thought he had CDs. I said, let me get a sample for my son. Because I, I follow rap too to be up on it. My kid is in it. I'm in it. All right. Hey, now, you know, now, I got criticized from like a couple of um, employees who thought that my, my, my raps inside the book weren't, weren't strong. In other words, okay. 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 I can answer that. Because I was looking at that. Let me tell you something. The man is a writer. He didn't say he was a rapper, but he did very good for what he put down. Because I was stealing it. Okay? I was trying to feel it. Yeah, you, because you don't see him with no bleed as a rapper. You see him as your boss, your friend, your compadre. You know? You don't see that. For me, as an independent entity, I was looking at the rhymes and things he was saying. And I was saying, you heard him, he said, independent entity. I said, you know, this is pretty good. For a gentleman who's on the rap, that shows one thing. He's done his homework. That's what I look for and read. Who's done their homework and who haven't done their homework. And that's the most important thing. Your focus and doing your homework before you drop it. That is it. And your name again, sir? It's Russell R. Yates III. And call Everybody me call me the Don. From Harlem. That's Don right. of Harlem. And everybody asks so, me for information and favors. And I should so, do what I do. Uh, finally, something that you want to say to readers all over the world. I mean, they are checking this website. They're checking these videos. They're checking for the testimonies. Okay. Uh, Bill right. Duke just spoke to me. I know Mr. Duke, the director. That's Great man. Right. He was, he's ready Great to man. get down and get it popping. That's, that's what I'm so talking about. What do you want to say to okay. the world right I, now? So? What I want to say to the world is, you seen the videos of the rappers. You heard the, the, the CDs of the rappers. Now, read Mr. Relentless Aaron's books and seal it all wrapped into one nightly package. Alright, thanks a lot. Sir. I'm out. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, sir.